Hey guys, this is Sega the Frontline Tactic. Playing some Dawn of War 2. This also has the Attach the Chaos Rising expansion. I've always wanted to do a playthrough of this. I played this years and years ago when it first came out. And I went the, the Loyalist route. And this time I think I'm going to play the Chaos route, uh, which gets you into the expansion. Which, instead of just jumping right into the Chaos Rising, I was... It's like, well, I don't remember all the characters and all the events that happened that led up to Chaos Rising. So I thought, why don't I just start with the the beginning of Dawn of War? But sadly, I don't have my Dawn of War di 1 disc anymore. So we're just going to kick off with Dawn of War 2, which I believe the end of Dawn of War 1, it's mostly a... Uh, it was him stopping... He played as a commander stopping the... An orc wog, I believe, and then there was an expansion called Dark Crusade with the Necrons and the Tau, which was really cool because there was this territory map that you pushed and defended and attacked, and you built your character up and got war gear that way. Dawn of War One is quite a bit different than Dawn of War Two in the regards of how it is in RTS. Dawn of War One was more of your traditional RTS like. Uh, Warcraft, 1, 2, and 3, uh, Command and Conquer, and Starcraft, those kind of things. Where you build up an economy, resource management, things like that. Dawn of War 2 is more of a hero-centric slash small squad uh, micromanager. Like, you are having to take in a couple heroes and a couple troops and creating your own little skirmish. Plays more like a kill team than it does a full Warhammer 40k game, which is like your full scale army, which is more of what Dawn of War 1 was, where you would microman or build an economy, build footholds and locations. I guess neither of them are really too much like the. Well, I guess this game is more like Kill Team, the tabletop Kill Team version versus uh, the 40k full version. Uh, but. Relic, when they got the license to do Dawn of War for Warhammer 40k and the Space Marines, they did so by making their own subsector and then made their own successor chapter, which the Blood Ravens, which come on, it's it's they have to be connected to the Blood the Blood Angels because they have a lot of similarities. And I think they even suffer from the. Uh, the Red Thirst, the Black pl the black Rage. Not positive, but... This allow uh, Games Workshop allowed them to do this, make their own pocket lore, so to speak, so that it didn't conflict with the continuity of the rest of the 40k lore, which is pretty in-depth and vast. And so I thought that was a neat partnership that they did. And in recent years, it seems that Games Workshop is even through popularity, accepted the Blood Ravens into their fold. You can see this in some of their uh, magazines, such as White Dwarf, as well as in some of the rule books. I believe uh, they make an appearance in the 8th edition and the 7th edition Adeptus Astratus or the Space Marine rule book, as well as the core rule book. I'd have to double check it. I'd have to actually pull it off my shelf and double check. Not that I've played a lot of 8th edition. I've played like one game. But let's get underway. This is probably one of my favorite Warhammer 40k uh, games. Uh, up there next to Chaos Gate, which I would love to get my hand on a, a Chaos Gate. I saw it on GOG. I'm tempted to buy it. I might do that still. As well as Space Marine, Warhammer 40k Space Marine, which was a standalone, which I believe was going to be a trilogy, but THQ went under. And that was going to be. That was it's more of your third-person action, uh, almost like a dungeon crawler. Linear dungeon crawler is how it played out, but it was amazing. It was brutal. Really, I thought, captured the grim dark. I would say those two are the best. Those, These three, the Dawn of War 2 series, Space Marine, and Chaos Gate are probably the three best Warhammer 40k games that I've ever seen published. So, let's get this campaign started. Uh, I will be playing as myself, Segif here. Oh, quick uh, lore bit. Those of you guys that don't know, the stud 
on top of their head. It's not an implant or uh, or anything like that. It's actually a, like a spike, like a giant nail that's hammered into the individual skull, and it's a mark of service. So that means 50 years of service. So at minimum, with gene seed emplacement, this space marine right here is about 75 to 100 years old, or just under 100 years because he hasn't earned his second stud of service yet. So, in case you guys ever see the portraits throughout the, sh throughout the game, or in other lore bits, or anything like that, or descriptions of uh, sergeants or commanders or force commanders having studs in their foreheads, it's a mark of service or a badge. So while I'm playing the game, I'm also not going to talk over a lot of the cutscenes and dialogue, just so those that are playing along with me or watching along as I play along that want to get the lore and the dialogue, I don't want to ruin that or uh, overshadow that for you guys. So let's go on the adventure. Subsector Aurelia. This cluster of worlds stands on the very edge of the Imperium of Man. From this frontier came the Blood Ravens, a chapter of the Emperor's own Space Marines. Now, savage aliens seek to overrun the sector and break the Blood Ravens once and for all. Captain Davian Thule and a handful of Space Marines lead the raw recruits defending these worlds. Now, another Space Marine joins this desperate battle. A newly promoted commander, ready to lead in our darkest hour. You are this Space Marine. And you will tip the balance toward victory. I really like the art style the kind of classic painting animation that they do for a lot of the cutscenes in this game. Commander Segev, you are Segev, a space marine recently promoted to the rank of Force Commander. You have been sent to Calderas to help Captain Davian Thule stave off a massive orc invasion, such as your reputation. The chapter expects that you alone will be enough to tip the balance of the fight and save Calderas. A man of few words, you are renowned for keeping calm in high-pressure situations and finding a path to victory in the face of overwhelming odds. Now, I don't remember them saying that this was a recruitment world. Uh, so this is going to be kind of fun, me replaying Dawn of War 2, maybe at a slower pace, and really listening to the dialogue. I don't remember really listening to the dialogue. I just remember playing, like, you know, raw Space Marine for the Emperor. Uh, and I played it really fast. I burned through it really fast. So, this is going to be nice. I'm older. I'm more patient. So, let's go. Calderas. We Blood Ravens select our initiates from this world's fierce warriors. Calderas is the cradle and the future of our chapter. Now, the orcs would take it from us. This, we cannot allow. I kind of find it weird that a person of his prowess, Captain Davian Thule, is wielding a heavy bolter. Usually that's... Scouts, stay in cover! Kill the orcs that are out in the open! more of a ninth company uh, signature. Welcome, Commander. This is Captain Davian Thule in command here on Calderas. We are battling the orcs that threaten this world. Target those orc shooters. You have dropped right into the combat zone. I am north of you with several squads of our initiates. We are under heavy fire and losing control of our flanks. Move north and provide support. All right, let's move up. Destination confirmed. Rain fire I think I'm going to plan on making him very tanky. 
while uh, creating a gun line. That's kind of how I play traditional tabletop 40k. Is I set up uh, my HQs to have more uh, melee oriented, while I set up a gun line. Get a charge off. Move up my soldiers. Tactical squad here. The orcs ahead of you are trying to outflank us. Eliminate them. Move there. Under attack. Moving to cover there. Frag out. Yeah. And we're gonna get into melee apparently. Get hurt too bad. Low level boys. Enemy destroyed. Alright, and then we're gonna move our tactical squad to swing around this placement because we don't want to get pinched off too hard. We're just gonna run through that barrier. Reinforcements have arrived. Need Push to have forward them initiative. Have any cover that they don't need. Forward. Pop that, that way I believe we do some suppression. Get to that position, brothers. Lose the cover. Under attack. Oh man. Just crawling in there. Get out of here now. But yeah, no, this is more of a, a ninth company captain kind of maneuver where you set up a, a heavy weapon. Green skin eliminated. They have a stock of targets here. Alright, we're gonna have our force commander just charge through there. I'll move up here. Better. Brag out and get him off the barrier there. This world is probably pretty, unless he's like the ninth or uh, tenth company captain, which is a possibility, which would make sense why. Uh, this is a recruitment world, so that is your scouts, initiates, and um, your neophytes. Depends on um, the chapter and their designation. I think I'm just gonna throw in pepper and lore and stuff like that because I understand a lot of people are not used to or familiar well fought, Commander. with 40k the green war. skins will not give us much time before they attack again i need you and sergeant tarkas to take charge of driving the orcs back move up to the ruins east of here and prepare to repel the next orc wave okay tactical marines a lot of chapters have a long history with uh having problems with uh orcs um uh, my chapter Specifically, that I have my homebrew. It's had a long history with Tyranids. Stay in cover. That truck has a heavy gun. More shooting, less dying, you kids. Hello, boys. There ain't no ruins. Ready. Moving to that position. Man, this dude just. Oh, come on. Really? Go and get me some more boys! And these Yumis is sparking up me truck! Back through the tunnel! More oh, orcs. And nice. lots of cover to use on our... Well done, Commander. Up. Those orcs have opened a path through the hill somehow. Let's get some Move forward more and grenades. seal it. These little supply boxes is how you replenish your grenades and uh, your medkit uses. Or actually, let's just use the medkit real right now. See me getting kind of chopped off. This way, brothers. Under attack. Commander, the orcs are using a guard tower near the cave mouth. Get them unlocked there. Take it out with a grenade. Brothers, fire. The Greenskins are clearly using that mine as a passage, Commander. Seal that entrance by any means necessary. The orcs have stacked fuel and ordnance near the entrance over there. A well-placed grenade should ignite it and bring the whole cave down. I had worse ideas. Good work, Space Marines. <laughs> the Greenskins will not be using that passage again anytime soon. 
but the leader managed to escape through the tunnel before we could kill him. That was our chance to Since cut this that's... invasion off at the head. He will show himself again, Tarkas. And when he does, we will be ready. Thunderhawks are en route. Prepare for extraction. Let our enemies beware, for victory is ours. First mission down. Improved Bolter, improved Chainsword. Some level ups. Nice. Speaking of level ups, I kind of really like how this game did level up, and so it kept it more of an RPG style. Uh, Welcome aboard we Strike Cruiser Armageddon, Commander. Calderas is currently facing a massive orc invasion that threatens to spill over to the entire sector. Urgent distress signals are coming from other nearby sectors, but we must concentrate our efforts here. I need you to take charge of an assault that's stalled on the surface below. Drop to the point marked on the planet map and start pushing into the orc's flank. So that was day one. Let's level up. Well, let's give him the chain sword. Get him started on melee. Um, I'm not going to touch... For him, I'm not going to touch any ranged abilities. What, what is that? I, I, got to do. I don't want to do any of that. So, I'm going to go first for, I think, Battle Cry, which allows him to knock down foes. Here we go. Ability unlocked. For a limited time, the Force Commander performs a special attack with every blow dealing damage and knocking enemies to the ground. Additionally, the Force Commander cannot be knocked down for the duration. So, that's going to make him super tanky, as well as able to kind of just, the idea is to charge in, and then battle cry, and just start throwing people. Uh, kind of like beating an orc with another orc, that, that kind of thing. Um, all this gear over here that they've kind of preemptively given you is level locked, and it was given for the purpose of kind of getting you set up, because once the game starts going off, it's very RNG kind of dungeon crawly where it kind of randomly generates some gear for you so sometimes it's very hard to find some good decent gear for you so it kind of sets you out a couple a nice uh, what's the word I'm looking for spread of some generic gear and some decent gear some buffs and stuff like that uh, plus the accuracy you know what we're going to give that to Tarkus because Tarkus is part of my gun line. Give him the improved bolter. How much does that improve his damage? Like two and a half points. So for Tarkus, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a mixture of uh, gunplay and HP. I think I wanted to get the, the veterans squad so that we can possibly get him some Terminator armor. So that's going to be a nice perk. So, But for now, we're just going to go for bolter specialization. Uh, allows him to fire more frequently, as well as I can possibly give him a storm bolter, which I love storm bolters because they just fire like crazy. Uh, well, that could be just me. I'm more of a bolter play guy. I also am a huge Imperial Fist fan. That's my tabletop chapter is based off of. So you know, woot, go Dorn. All right, and here's mission for day two. All right, guys. I will save day two for second episode, and I think that's how we're going to do. Each episode will be another day, and every day and every mission, this whole kind of area gets kind of fleshed out. Some of these missions you are timed, that you have to jump around, and you're going to not, you're going to fail some of them, because you're going to have to ignore them and pick different locations to get. Alright guys, I will see you next episode to kill some green skins. Till then, the Emperor protects on the front line.